Hello everyone, I'm the Real Solid Snake and welcome back to another episode of the Irish Critics. Now, you may have noticed that a new Jurassic Park movie is coming out. Uh, yeah, for the last 14 years or so we've been calling it the Jurassic Park Trilogy. Well, come the end of this week, that's the last time we're going to be able to do that. So, this is all going to change with the imminent arrival of Jurassic World. A movie that shows a lot of promise for what is undoubtedly going to be a new trilogy. So, I'm sure you may have guessed it, I'm going to look back at the original Jurassic Park trilogy. Starting off with the classic Jurassic Park. Now here was a film phenomenon. The first of its kind that I'm actually able to remember. It came out just as the school holidays were starting, back when I had just turned about 8 years old. And everyone, I mean everyone was obsessed with this film because it ushered in a new era of groundbreaking visual effects. But was it any good? Well, I'm here to talk about the movie today, so here we go, let's get started. This is Jurassic Park. So the movie starts off with a bunch of men carting off a dinosaur to go into its new pen. But of course, as with many Spielberg movies, things will soon go awry, won't they? <laughs> yeah. I think it's safe to say that kids under the age of, say, six or seven, won't find these images very disturbing. So this all leads to the introduction of our two main characters, Dr. Alan Grant, a paleontologist, and Dr. Ellie Sadler, a paleobotanist, and oh yes, sorry, there are more characters. Richard Hammond, a thief for breaking and entering and stealing champagne. But today, I guarantee it. No, he's just inviting them to his new theme park for the weekend. A theme park? A Jurassic Park, of course. Along for the ride is Dr. Ian Malcolm. Uh, what do you do? Chaotician. Chaotician, actually. Never heard of it. And last but not least, the lawyer. <laughs> I bring scientists, you bring a rock star. Hmm? Yeah, you're so not gonna make it, miss. Anyways, moving on. Here, we get our first look at the dinosaurs of this movie. Believe it or not, back in 1993, this was groundbreaking, revolutionary. Uh, but now, uh, no, no, not not quite so much now. We've seen, you know, it's well advanced since that. But in true Spielberg style, he still manages to make this scene very memorable, very touching, very moving, and quite incredible. Dr. Grant, my dear Doctor Sutton, welcome to Jurassic Park. After a long time, the tree sap would get hard and become fossilized, just like a dinosaur bone, preserving the mosquito inside. This is a very interesting scene here, how they create the dinosaurs. But how do they know where to look for the mosquitoes in the first place? Uh, and how could they tell that, also, that the mosquitoes they had were from the Cretaceous period? And, and how did they know that it had dinosaur blood in them? Okay, okay, okay right, right, right. Sorry, sorry. Yes, I know. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Let's just move on. John, the kind of control you're attempting is... Uh, it's not possible. Listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but... Uh... Dr. Ian Malcolm is a bit annoying and preachy, isn't he? Okay, so here we have uh, Hammond's two grandkids entering. And they're coming along for the ride to be obviously the scaring children in distress and the peril that has to be saved, like yo, yada yada yada. Uh, they come to partake along with the tour, along with the rest of the cast, eventually coming upon uh, sick triceratops. Okay. Of course. Now, to be honest, I prefer this to most of the CGI in this movie because, like yo, this one here feels more real. It has a more intimate moment, like yo, uh, seeing this creature. This um, looks better in my opinion. And yes, I know they can do that with every single dinosaur, but you know what I mean. 
Oh yes, how can I forget about this character here? He's there to steal the DNA sample to bring to another company to replicate. That's going to make him super rich. And while doing so, he gives everyone he gives everyone here, uh, including Samuel L. Jackson, ample reason to not trust him and make himself look as shifty as possible. Oh, uh, I uh, finished debugging the phones. Uh... I, you know, I was gonna do, I, so I did. I, I, you know, told me that, so I, I debugged the phones, and uh, I thought maybe uh, I should tell you that the uh, system is gonna be uh, compiling for uh, 18 or 20 minutes. So some of the minor systems they might go on and off for a while, but it's nothing to worry about. It's just a simple thing. How the fuck could you not know he's up to something? So he manages to shut down some of the park security, hey, leading to our cast being stranded uh, right outside the Trans 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 paddock. But of course, nothing could go wrong here, right? Oh god, yeah. Back then, the ripples of the water were like were spoofed to death. I mean, it was even in spoofed in, in uh, sponsorship ads for this movie as well. Everything copied it back then. Similar to what The Matrix's bullet time did as well. Remember that was everywhere? Same thing. So out comes the T-Rex and holy shit. To this day, that stuff looks freaking awesome. If anybody gets a chance, they should watch this on Blu-ray. You'll definitely see the difference. Still, still awesome to look at. This scene right here is one of the most suspenseful, well-executed, and scariest scenes ever. When I went to see it, I remember everyone in the cinema were probably holding their breath because no one was making a sound. Me. I was panicking. I was literally begging my father to take me out of the, the movies. It was it scared me nearly half to death. Especially this scene here. No. <laughs> that was some scary shit for a young kid back in the day. But wasn't it fucking awesome? Let's watch it one more time. No. <laughs> uh never gets old. So Dr. Malcolm gets injured, Dr. Grants take care of the kids for the for a while, and the park ranger and Ellie go look for them too. Only to come across more trouble. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> Damn, that's so awesome. You know, the T-Rex is the star of the fucking show. Anytime he's on screen, you literally hold your breath. But don't get me wrong, the main cast is all good too, but the best thing about it is for those who for those who don't make it, I know, the bad guys will always get the comeuppance. So as Dr. Grant looks after the kids, the others try to restart the power to get Jurassic Park back online, leading to one hell of a confusing moment. I think we're back in business. Oh, Mr. Arnold. Now, how was that possible? He just lay there for that exact moment when someone would lay themselves up against the wall just for the hand to perfectly fall down on someone's shoulder at that exact moment. No, no, no. I'm not gonna let that slide. That's impossible. Oh yeah, the park ranger gets killed off too in a really cool scene. But if you look closely, the raptor's mouth isn't even anywhere near him. And I think one of the thumb crews just off camera just shaking those leaves about for dramatic effect. I'm doing it again, yes I know. Now that's two things I've kind of looked into a bit too much. Okay, right, let's just get this wrapped up. <laughs> Oh god, the years have not been kind to the raptors in this movie. I'm sorry, but that just looks absolutely terrible now. No. Oh well, I suppose I wouldn't have it any other way now, would I? It's what I remember from back in the day. But, uh, well, that is unless Steven Spielberg decides to do a George Lucas on us. Hopefully not. <laughs> Oh god, that is quite funny. But I'm actually quite amazed as to how those two were able to survive that. But anyways, this leads to a showdown between the humans and the Velociraptors. Man versus beast, human versus raptor. 
How can they survive this? Mirror answer is they can't. Of course, the T-Rex saved them. Come on! You know, we've always heard the T-Rex approach, and for this moment he just appears the fuck out of nowhere. Still, it's worth it for this parting shot of the beast itself. Fucking awesome. I always thought this moment was quite sad. I'm looking back on his creation, realizing he has to leave it all behind because, well, even he couldn't play God. I do like those kind of touching moments in these movies. And thus ends one of the greatest adventure films from the 90s. And that was Jurassic Park. And how does it hold up? Well, it's awesome. It has a few flaws here and there though. Some of the groundbreaking visual effects just don't hold up today. Uh, one or two characters in this is kind of irritating. Uh, but in true Spielberg magic, he created a wonderful adventure film that will live and uh, last throughout the ages. Uh, but I warn anyone who's going to show this to their kids, make sure they're at least you know, 9, 10. That way it might not disturb them so much. So, the movie went on to become the most successful film of all time during that moment. Uh, right uh, for a few years until Titanic uh, took it over. But it was leading for calls for a sequel pretty much straight away. Leading four years later to The Lost World. And that is coming up next.